Shovel Knight was one of my favorite games last year. It did everything right. Beautiful pixel art, incredible music, it controlled fantastically, had a memorable cast of characters and levels, and I guess the game design was pretty alright too. It was original and the perfect love letter to fans of the 8-bit platformers of years past. In my opinion, it will go down in history as an indie game legend. But hot dang, they weren't done there. Oh no, there's still lots of DLC coming. Part of Yacht Club's Kickstarter for this game included separate campaigns where you could play as other knights from the Order of No Quarter. After a year of development, the first of these campaigns is finally here, Plague of Shadows. Plague Knight is the first new character you can play as, and his adventure is completely different from the original. No really, I mean it. At first I wasn't quite sold on the idea because the majority of the levels are more or less the same as before, so it couldn't be that different or better, right? Oh no, the redesign here changes everything, and it truly feels like a brand new experience. The story in Plague of Shadows seems to be a side narrative that's happening at the same time as the original game. Shovel Knight is trying to stop the Order of No Quarter, but Plague Knight has his own motives to create a potion with unlimited power by destroying the other knights and stealing the ingredients. Because of this, the story seems to be in an alternate dimension of sorts because you actually beat Shovel Knight and evil is victorious. This leads to a lot of comical moments, like when you aren't allowed in town so you go through your secret entrance down below while seeing Shovel Knight walk around up top, or when you find the relics along the way, these once very handy gadgets are now useless junk to Plague Knight. He has magic, he don't need no relics. The story works in tandem with the original and gives a lot more expansion to the world, like the fact that there's an entire laboratory underneath the original village you visited, and the potion minigame girl now becomes a major character. Everything in theme is much more villainous too, where instead of being a hero trying to save the world, you don't care who gets in your way, you can even take out your own henchmen at will. This all adds to the idea that this new campaign is so drastically different from your first quest. Let's talk gameplay. Instead of your trusty shovel being the weapon of choice, Plague Knight has bombs and a staff. His main attack is a three-shot burst of bombs to damage enemies, and if you hold the attack button, he can launch himself across huge gaps. He has a double jump in addition to this explosion maneuver, so even though he's harder to control, it's easier to save yourself from an untimely death. His whole persona is amplified by how he controls. His original boss fight was wild and all over the place, and he reacts the same way when the player is at the helm. The planes were a nice surprise to me as they again teach you everything you need to know about Plague Knight here. First you're learning how to use your charge burst to cross gaps, but then it puts an enemy on the ledge to show you how to use your bombs in mid-air. And this also teaches you that throwing bombs gives you a little more hang time to help with precise platforming. It places a block of dirt above this ladder, and a normal bomb won't do the trick, so you learn that your explosion can break blocks around you, not just your bombs. It's a perfect first level, just like before, and helps you get used to all the differences. And believe me, you'll need practice. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I played, I rage quit on the Explodatorium because I just wasn't used to how Plague Knight flew around everywhere. But once I came back to it, I started to understand the mechanics. You have to plan ahead and know the trajectories he'll take in order to survive this time. Overall, I'd say the platforming is harder than Shovel Knight, but the boss fights are a little easier since you have more firepower. You have to beat the original Shovel Knight once in order to unlock Plague Knight's campaign, which is actually really smart because you would have a pretty hard time if you didn't know the basic mechanics. Now, there's a lot more at Plague Knight's disposal than just bombs and a charge burst. You can buy upgrades to affect how each of these work. For the bombs, you can change the trajectory, what the explosion does, and how long until it explodes. For example, you can cause the bombs to float up or hover around you like a shield, you can combine them to make a larger explosion, or even set them like trip mines or have them search for enemies like a sentry gun. The burst jump as well has different attributes you can add, like frost shards that fall below you to attack enemies, or a slow descent when you leap. This one makes it much easier to do the platforming, by the way. It seems like there's a greater emphasis placed on these items than the relics in Shovel Knight. It's much easier to get gold in this version and there's less to spend it on. Plus, it teleports you back to your lab every time you beat a level, instead of having to go back from the map screen. It would seem the devs want you to try out all the different weapons and get a feel for what loadout you like best. On top of all that, Plague Knight can accumulate different items that use up magic. These are called Arcana and function much like the relics from the original game. In fact, those relics that I said are junk earlier are actually used to trade with Chester for these new items. There's new paths to explore, signified by a green coin stuck in the wall, and if you complete these challenges areas, you can find the relics. Then you can find Chester in his original locations from your first playthrough, and trade him the relics for a free arcana item. Some of them function just like the relics, like the bait bomb or smoke bomb, which are essentially the fishing rod or phase locket. But there are some new ones too, like the staff of surging, which lets you do a shroo you can- It swaps importance of money for importance of exploration, again adding to the theme that this whole expansion is so different. 
Plus, it's pretty funny to think that Plague Knight actually found the relics first, and just gave them to Chester for Shovel Knight to buy later. There's also Cypher Coins to gather, those little green guys I was just talking about. These are the main collectibles of the game, with around 30 in each level. Some are hidden, some are in plain sight, but they're surprisingly fun to collect. You spend these to unlock more power-ups, and to open other portions of the game, like the second village. So they're pretty important, especially if you want a secret item when you collect all 420 of them. Finally, the health system is entirely different as well. This is probably the most interesting change and really adds a dimension of strategy to how you play. Instead of buying health upgrades from the village, Plague Knight can hold 5 extra health tonics at a time to increase his health. If you use them, you can collect more, but when you die, you lose all the tonics that were active. Now, I died a lot, and this became especially frustrating when I fought a boss with max health, and then lost and had to fight him with 4 health. But I didn't realize this till later on. They put a health tonic with the chicken before each boss fight, so you can rebuild your stock of potions each time you die. Then, as you're stocking up on them, you can practice different strategies, learn patterns, and get better at the boss through skill as well. It can still be frustrating in the beginning, but you do get a permanent health upgrade after beating 2, 5, and 8 bosses. This led to entirely new strategies though. For example, during a normal stage I'd save up my tonics because I know I might die, and then use them all when I fight the boss. Or if I'm about to die, I can pop a tonic or two to regain health. If you're maxed out on tonics, it makes sense to use one when you can grab another, so there's a bit more to manage manage and think about. There's also an arcana item that regenerates health every time you damage an enemy for a brief period. Health becomes a huge point of strategy in this version instead of just something to keep an eye on. But really it was the little details that sold me on Plague of Shadows. I thought Plague Knight couldn't fit through this door because he's not shaped like Shovel Knight, but nope, he just shifts himself around to fit. If you throw a bomb inside Oolong, he burps out smoke. If you talk to Baz after you beat him, he can join your team and he shows up back at your laboratory wearing some ridiculous clothes. Plague Knight's magic meter refills over time instead of just depleting, which totally makes sense because he's like a crazy magic dude. Instead of fighting Plague Knight in the Explodatorium, you actually get to fight Shovel Knight himself, and he uses all the different relics while he attacks. I love that it's basically the same fight as the first game, just the roles are reversed. The dialogue is the same in everything. And how he technically wins but you steal from him while he's sleeping? It makes you feel like all this is happening unbeknownst to you on your first quest. Even the cute little dance animation he does when he beats a stage is just the best. Also, have you tried holding down? You won't be disappointed. They really paid attention to every little detail to make this game more memorable than just a reskinned shovel knife. So is Plague of Shadows better than the original? Well, that's hard to say. But is it different? Well, duh, did you even watch the video? Why would you ask that? Yacht Club Games is quickly becoming one of my favorite developers because they just get it. They know how to make an incredible game and then make us rethink everything about that original idea. Not to mention, the entire DLC is free. Now that's how you do an expansion. Jake Kaufman also released the soundtrack for free because he's just a boss like that. With King Knight and Specter Knight campaigns coming next, Shovel Knight could continue to be an incredible experience for years to come. Here's to you, Yacht Club. Here's to you. Hey guys, I'm Snowman. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, maybe give this video a little thumbs up. It would help me out a great ton. Also, consider subscribing. There's all sorts of videos just like this on my channel. Top 10s, videos on game design, all sorts of stuff. Check out these other videos before you go, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye